I think that you have to be on your toes and you've got to be nimble uh, with this market. Uh, I think we're due for a, for some type of a pause. And I know a lot of people are, have been saying that too, but when you start to see some of those areas, you know, like tech, because tech is roughly 30% of the S&P, right? if that's not going to be there, you know, it's, it's going to be, okay, well, what's going to take its place? And I just think that there's been, it's not like there hasn't been other performers. And as we've talked about with the, like the industrials and the materials and even the home builders and the semis, right? Th those names of those areas have, have done extremely well this year too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's, there would be a little bit of a, of a break in the action. Um, Welcome to the Rose Show podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm yeah. here with Christian Fromhertz. He's founder and CEO of Tribeca Trade Group. We're going to be talking about markets, going to be talking about quarter one, 2024, the current market, and what we can anticipate for quarter two, as well as the rest of 2024. I'm so excited to speak with you, Christian. How are you doing today? Likewise, I'm excited to to uh, to be speaking here with you too. I mean, we're just starting the um the the second quarter, and you know I think we're kind of looking for some some direction and in the overall equities. I mean, clearly we're seeing some momentum and things that we really haven't seen momentum in a while, like gold, silver, and things like that. So it's kind of an interesting start to the quarter. But um, yeah, I'm I'm you know excited and enthused to be to be uh, starting to trade and and see how that second quarter is going to start. So um, I'm happy to be here talking with you. Exactly. I'm happy to have you here. You combine your technical trade flow and macro top-down analysis in this amazing TTTG <laughs> proprietary trading program that you have, which I love. I think it makes, I love your charts. Excellent stuff, Christian. So I want you to help us make sense of what's going on. We entered the year, we had AI, AI everything, and we had NVIDIA, SMCI, now the repositioning of quarter one, quarter two, we're seeing, like you said, gold, commodities, copper, energy, oil. Make some sense of this. But what, do you, what are you seeing right now in the current market? Are you giving a lot of weight to this? You think this is a foreshadowing of the next quarter or you think this is just a repositioning and don't put too much thought into this? Sure. I, you know, and I, there was, um, I was listening to, I think it was on, Friday as the as the first quarter ended, uh, it was on CNBC. I think Tim Seymour. They were going around and they were talking like about, mm -hmm. yeah, the, um, what what they what their takeaways were from the first quarter. And he said something like, "The first quarter had some something for everyone um, in mm -hmm. the first quarter. Whether you were in, you know, crypt. There's a lot of things that worked really well. Cryptos worked, you know, as just as you were going through. Um, artificial intelligence was was a big theme. And then we really started to see some other groups as the quarter. Um, war on, we really started to see, you know, a trend that just, you know, continue to happen in industrials and uh, industrials just kind of chugged along for, for the whole quarter. Um, very little volatility in that group. Um, we also like the financials really kind of came into play and the banks and like JP Morgan, I, you know, I, for a name that I wish I was in for the first, for the first quarter that I wasn't was JP Morgan and, and the banks just really, the larger banks traded really well. Um, I had been, you know, um, kind of in the on the fringes of um, the financial group. I was long some uh, private equity, you know, names that were acting really well. I was long some exchange stocks, um, but really we started to see those big banks kind of kick in. So to me, like that was one of the surprises of the first quarter. I just didn't think, you know, I always will just follow, try to follow uh, price action, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and. Um, you know, follow the trends that are important, but that was one of the ones that really, um, that really surprised me. And I think I'm, uh, do I have the performance? I think the banks ended up, uh, where's XLF? And, and, and by the way, the other part of that too, you know, when you look at XLF, it's, it was also the insurance companies, mm -hmm. you know, had a, had a huge move too. The XLF was up 12%. Wow. Um, for the first quarter. So that outperformed the S and P. So again, like that, that was a surprise. Um, clearly the semiconductors were the leader, you know, they, they finished up the quarter about 29%. So, you know, that's, that was the go-to area. Um, you know, the performance for NVIDIA was, I just couldn't believe I, I kept on looking that as the quarter was wrapping up. And uh, one time I saw, at one point I saw 80 up 80%. I mean, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal numbers for, 
a year. And I think when you go down through those sectors, um, included in that is the home builders too, which yes. logged in for, up 14%. Um, a lot of areas, not just even the home builders um, were, did extremely well. But those numbers, when, when you look at how, some of the, how those sectors perform, you could have easily said, hey, that's good for a whole year, let alone a quarter. Um, you know, and then as the quarter went on, we started to see really um, you know, tech kind of take a back seat. Um, the IGV ETF, the software ETF, finished down in March, still up nicely for the, you know, uh, up five, actually underperformed for the year so far. For the quarter, finished up 5%. So it wasn't all those popular growth names. And I know that, you know, when, when we look at Twitter, sometimes we'll see a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, fall in love with, um, you know, certain, you know, software names and, you um, What's, what's the like enterprise software and so forth, but mm -hmm. that's not really where the performance was. So, so software was down for the month and um, bio, and then we started to see like healthcare was strong for a little bit, but the trend wasn't as strong. And, and, um, and then as the quarter, as the, the quarter wore on, especially for March, um, you had things like the materials, which, you know, I was talking about the materials. I was like, Hey, is this the next sector that's really going to trend? And um, it's, uh, underperforming the overall S&P a little bit year to date, uh, up 8.6%. But in March was very strong, up 6%, because I think the S&P was up 3% for um, for March. So so materials doubled that. And, um, you know, we didn't even talk about the cryptos too, but but mm -hmm. those were super, you know. So again, like you could go on, you know, we could talk for, for you know, fill up the whole hour or so. Um, we didn't even talk about energy too, but energy and, and the gold miners were your two best performing groups in March. And I think that um, was surprising to some people. Well said, nice uh, roundup there. Thank you. You know, it's funny you said the home builders and nail um, is one I traded before. And that was surprising. You know, the whole first quarter, you see a nice trend going up. You know, there's all this talk about housing crashing and all this stuff. And then you see that there you go. Home builders are on a steady stream up. Um, as well. And yeah, right. Caterpillar did excellent, you know, and then the AI. And then, yeah, like you said, you know, the the end of the quarter, March, we didn't see as much with those, you know, those sexy names like Datadog and, you know, Snow. Yep. I mean, Snow gave very soft guidance. And, you know, the, even the cyber securities, you know, CrowdStrike, it ran a lot, absolutely, but it ended a little weak, you know, it, it wasn't- Yeah, they got it, tired. Yeah. Right. It got tired. And then the other one, Zscaler, I didn't think their earnings were that bad. And, you know, that's another one of my um, I, long holdings I had and that, you know, sold off. So it's almost like they were the hated stocks. At some point they were unloved. And that's then, right. Yeah. And the obesity <laughs> drugs, right? Those are the the yeah. NVO, Illili, LLY, LA, and yep. then, you know, the Viking Therapeutics. Um, the, what a wild ride those have been. And then, like you said, the crypto coin, Bitcoin, you know, and then the miners. I mean, my gosh, the way those things run. Um, but yeah, like like you said it well, you know, there was something for everyone in the first quarter. And it's like in bull markets, it's like everyone eats, right? There's a little bit for everyone. Yeah, so everyone yeah. was a little happy um, with uh, the way things ended. Now, Christian, what, what about the current market? What mm -hmm. are your thoughts? Is it just a repositioning? Are you thinking this is greater? I mean, you think there could be a real rotation going on, or do you think it's just a broadening of this rally? Well, I, you know, I think there's a, there's a couple of different factors at play, but overall for the market to try to answer your your first question, I think for the overall market, I mean, I, it's I think we're due for a I think we're due for a for some type of a pause, and I know a lot of people are, have been saying that too. But when you start to see some of those areas, you know, like tech, because tech is roughly thirty percent of the S and P, right? if that's not going to be there, you know, it's it's going to be okay. Well, what's going to take its place, and I just think that there's been, it's not like there hasn't been other performers. And as we talked about with the, like the industrials and the materials and even the home builders and the semis, right? Th those names of those areas have, have done extremely well this year too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's, there would be a little bit of a, of a break in the action. Um, you know, there's been this nice uptrend channel that the S&P has been in for a while, but I, I really think at, at, 
that when you go through a whole year, you, you do usually see some volatility creep into the market. So I, I would be okay with that at the, and like, like hitting the reset button on a lot of groups and then kind of seeing how things shake out. Um, I think for now, and I, I kind of get it um, with gold and gold miners and, and so forth and why they're running a little bit. It seems like from what we've heard, because that's part of the equation too, you know, of course, watching with the technicals and momentum, but it's also like, you know, what the Fed is is up to. And like, you know, we've seen these inflation reports come out and, you know, they have not been uh, particularly uh, you know, on the good side of seeing mm -hmm. inflation come down. And you have to wonder if, if inflation is starting to kind of pick up again, because it's too, it's, you, you can't really judge that by one or two reports. Um, you know, you've got to see that a little bit more. And we know that the last two CPI reports have been showing the uptick in inflation. Now, the difference has been, and certainly like with what crude has been doing, like that's not going to help inflation go down um, either. So these are not convincing things right now that we're seeing that that inflation is like, oh, we're done with that. We've moved, We people have may have moved on from it saying like, okay, I'm done with inflation, but um, I don't think it's actually done. And what's different is we're hearing the Fed for now, basically, I don't, I, it, I'm stumped why they were ta even talking about entertaining rate cuts mm -hmm. with inflation still running as high. You know, maybe they are seeing something that we don't know, but um, I, I just think that they're for now, like they're done raising interest rates. And, um, you know, it's a, they're, they're base they're trying to basically tell us that at some point this year, um, they are going to cut rates, whether it's one or three. Now, again, do I believe that uh, per se? N no. <laughs> but, um, you know, when we get there, I mean, it's a long, you know, we're just starting the second quarter. So it's tough to look that far down the line because we don't know what the what the next inflation reports are going to show, especially with, you know, how much has crude gone up, you know, in the last uh you know, in the last couple of weeks. And of, and of course, that's not the only component of inflation, but, um, you know, that's, that's troubling um, to me. We're, we're almost back to where we were in, um, you know, going back to what, um, what, what's the chart that I'm looking at? I guess uh, towards the end of last year, was it? Or th maybe the middle of last year when, when crude was at a, around its high. So, you know, we've really moved a lot. I'm looking at crude, just a chart of crude oil mm -hmm. futures and like we bottomed around 70 and we're back up to where this thing, right? yeah, 85. So I don't know, you know, so I, I think that you have to be on your toes and you've got to be nimble uh, with this market, uh, this market um, with um, what we're seeing in some, with some of the prices of this go up and, and some of the other um, commodities. Love that. See, that's what I love about your trading, Christian. You sprinkle in that macro. It's not just technical. You look at the flows as well but, and the sentiment but the macro and the macro is so important. We need to keep track is, of the yeah. dollar, the yields. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you, you had a great tweet the other day and I chimed in on it and you said something about, you know, the Russell, the, you know, IWM mm -hmm. and the small caps. And I agree with you. They're very sensitive to the rates and it has a lot to do. We got to watch those yields. You know, if those yields yeah. go up, you know, I, I don't see how we can have a big rally in IWM. So um, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, last week was a little bit of a mixed signal because, yes. you know, sometimes you could see for the, for a quarter end, you could see a little bit of rebalancing where they're, where they're buying some of the underperformers and selling some of the, um, some of the winners. And, and that kind of, you could kind of just see some of the, the outperformers, you know, like NVIDIA was kind of just stuck in the mud last week and was underperforming a little bit while the small caps were going up. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, let's see how this shakes out after quarter end. Um, because I just know that that's how that's, you know, it's a mechanical mechanical type uh, rebalancing that some of the funds do. And um, sure enough, I'm like, you know, once I saw yield started starting to mm -hmm. um, head higher on Monday morning and, and continuation, you know, we've seen the small caps kind of get walloped uh, the yes. first two days of the of, um, of April so far. So Absolutely. Well said. So that's so important to keep an eye on that. And then, yeah, it's like a mixed signals. I was like, we're having a dialogue of higher for longer inflation on one side and you're having those stocks <laughs> run, but then right. at the same time, you're having this 
rate cuts, and then you have the small cap starting to run. I'm like, you really can't have both uh, running that way. So um, definitely have to be very cautious there. And you, you made some excellent points there about inflation ticking back up, but we don't really know. Um, but now we see crude at 85. And, you know, I always say, you know, if they, they're talking about rate cuts, I mean, obviously it's going to help their interest expense, their massive debt, public debt over 34 trillion. And they just keep adding to that, you know, that'll definitely help their interest expense if they lower those rates um but you know if we cut yeah. too soon that's inflationary and you know <laughs> yeah. oil can tick back up and there are a lot of issues on that side um but you know their debt is obviously fueling inflation already and there's leading to monetary destruction there's so many issues going on of course as traders we need to follow price and that's the most important thing at the end of the day is just following price but all those factors go into that price uh, so it's very important to watch all that. Um, <clears throat> I want to go into the uranium. I know you you tweeted about uranium. I want to mm -hmm. talk about the energy oil, how you're playing this um, in this whole time period. Do you like to have some allocation to it? Um, do you think some people are saying, oh, it's already had its run. It's too late now. Do you think we're just in the middle of it? What are your thoughts looking at energy, which is... Energy demand is through the roof. Yeah, I, I mean, I will generally um, look at the energy group in terms of, um, you know, a couple different areas. You know, obviously, you know, XLE has been trending very nicely. That's the, you know, that's the the big sector for energy and it's market cap weighted. So Exxon, Chevron uh, have big weights there, but I'll break it down. You know, I'll try to look for where the strength is, um, whether it's just the big names um, whether it's the refining names, which mm -hmm. I like to trade the refiners. Um, mm, me too, quite... PSX. Yeah, um, so so I like that group. Um, you know, a couple of names that I've been long um, for a bit are the uh, the the PSX and the mm -hmm. um, and the MPC uh, nice. Marathon Petroleum. Mm -hmm. So you know, so that's an area that I'm just basically riding the trend in in uh, one of my portfolios. And um, staying with those names and and yeah, there's there is an ETF for that group. Uh, it's it's crack. It's an easy one to remember <laughs> is for crack spreads. Um, so C R A K, and that is like you know it looks like you know what you would think AI stocks were doing at one point. It's very very strong. So and then I begin to kind of look for other you know other groups that are starting to maybe perk up a little bit. You know for a while I was trading some of the coal names. But the leader in that group is really hasn't been performing well, which is um, for a while I was trading AMR. Yeah, AMR. And the, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the and that kind of you know fall you know fell from grace and like that's like you know which I think we we kind of cover a lot when when um, when we've done these videos before too, um, is that you know you want to stick with names when they're acting well and and don't and once they begin to kind of fall from grace. And I don't know what the the real cause for some of the coal names breaking down. Maybe they're just not, they're transitioning maybe a, a little bit away from them. But once they begin to, like if something's in a, in a trend and it's been acting well for like a year or two years, and then it really starts to break that 50 day moving average, like AMR did, um, you know, and, and again, this was going, you know, the coal names were doing wonderfully the last time that energy was really popular. So right now this group is not, uh, you know, so so it's a little bit of process of elimination. We'll look at the coal names. If they're not acting well, okay, that's fine. We'll we'll you know we'll find you know the next best trade. So yeah, I, I've been uranium kind of went out of favor um, and declined a little bit for I think most of uh, February and and half of March, but they started to make the turn back up. And, um, you know, then also just started to kind of just uh, as I during the day, I like to read the tape a little bit and follow option activity just to see where people are starting mm -hmm. to speculate a little bit. And um, we started to see some call buying and things like CCJ, which is one of the more popular okay. uranium names. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also up, it got a broker upgrade the other day. Um, and then we started to see what I like to call as uh, uh, junior CCJ, which is mm -hmm. NXE. Um, and that's next gen energy. And again, that's, it's an under $10 stock, but, um, you know, I like the way it looks on the chart and every once in a while I'll take a position that's you know, for a name that's under $10. So, like so to answer your question, yeah, to answer your question, I, I like to kind of look for, um, what areas, even though I'm not an energy expert, you know, uh, that's not what my, 
what my <laughs> what my specialty is to to trade energy stocks but i like you know you can use some of the information that you got a couple years ago when energy was very strong right it was what i think 2022 where energy was by far and away the best performer mm -hmm. as everything else kind of corrected but you could draw on what you learned from then if you traded a lot of energy and this way you know those names and um can build from that the next way that uh, the next time that either energy which right now or some other group becomes popular you could say okay what are my go-to names and within these groups and this way you can kind of you know um jump further on that the learning curve and, and get involved um rather than be late in some of the trends exactly it's about staying one step ahead of the trends and then that's like <laughs> your marketing slogan for your company which i have to say you do you definitely stay one step ahead because that tweet of psx and mpc which actually are my two favorite refiners was on march 7th so yeah, you were yeah. definitely ahead of that i remember the Thank real you. breakdown you're welcome of tech and you know, I want to go into tech and talk about the fall from graces that we're seeing over there. They're still holding their support. But before we go to tech, I want to go into the gold and silver. You, you touched sure. upon uranium. I like the juniors, the juniors in silver and gold and uranium, U-R-N-J. That's it. <laughs> There's so many of the different tickers and CCJ is my favorite, the great one right there. Um, but what are your thoughts on the miners, gold, silver, and then I know you mentioned fertilizers today, CF, and then yeah, copper. yeah. <laughs> what are you yeah. thinking about all those commodities? There? Can I share my? Can we go through please some charts? Do. Yeah, okay, please let's do. let's do that rather than me just um just, go yeah. through this this way. You can kind of we can see uh, what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should be able Perfect. to. Okay, good. Looks good. All right, so. I think that's good. I don't think I need to. Okay. Sorry. I'm so used to using Zoom and like hitting the record. I have, you know, it's like muscle yeah. memory of like hitting the record button. And you have some every time. videos as well on your YouTube <laughs> channel. Love so, it. so this is, uh, so we'll, we'll just finish up with uranium. Like, so this is mm -hmm. the, one of the uranium ETFs. So notice like, this is what I was referring to as a decline in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so once it breaks like the 50 day moving average like this, it just kind of goes off my screen for a little bit. And then I begin to just monitor. And I was like, huh, you know, this was, so this is, we're looking at a, a daily chart here. And uh, this was an interesting candle. This was the top of the value area for the year, this gray mm -hmm. box in here. And um, which is based on volume at price. And this was a really nice reversal bar. Now I didn't catch it here, but I began to kind of watch it and say, okay, like uranium is starting to kind of build a little bit. It'd be interesting if it turns the corner. And sure enough, like two days ago, it, it's turned, now reclaimed its 50 day moving average. And, and now it could be like just reclaiming that trend. Um, so your other question for gold, gold, I, I have to confess, I, I think gold, you know, for me, because, you know, been doing this for a long time and gold becomes gold can sometimes work, but I've noticed like over the last, you know, and maybe looking at the weekly chart is, is the best, but it's kind of just goes in and out where it'll act like it's trending and then it will stop. And, you know, so there's, there's been a lot of traps and like, this is just the, mm -hmm. the, um, the gold mine, the big gold miners ETF GDX. And, you know, looking at the weekly chart, um, which is mainly, I trade off the weekly and the daily it's, it's messy and it streaks and then it stops. And, and it, when it stops, it really stops and it reverses and goes the other way. Mm -hmm. So you, so you, like, my opinion is for gold is that you can't get like, you can't stay married to it. Um, but, and like, that's with any trade, of course, but really with this, because it just, it, it's all over the place. And, you know, when you think, when you zoom out a little bit and, you know, look at this thing, it's a tough, it's a tough trade. So mm -hmm. right now it's going and we're seeing a lot of momentum and call buying and gold and silver. I do prefer, you know, so before I get rid of this GDX chart, as long as it stays above, you can see this yellow box now, as long as it stays above here, right? You could be long this for, for a little bit. Um, and that's right around like 3170 uh, is my level. So, you know, it could just be trending because even though it's already made a nice move from the lows, this is just, a, this was just a range bound move. Now it's maybe beginning to trend. Um, and that's anything outside of its value area for the year. Gold, on the other hand, Gold, on the other mm -hmm. hand, um, right, right in here. I mean, this is a different picture to me, right? And this really got going yeah. 
um, you know, and has broken this whole range. So, I mean, this looks more definitive. Um, we kept on looking. I remember over the last year, I, I would get a lot of questions about this and people were like, okay, what about gold now? What about, you know, and it just kept failing where it needed to make that push higher. So I do like this back test, right? So zoom back in here. Yeah. Right. I like this little back test in here, you know, maybe cup and handle type thing. And mm -hmm. um, so it's trending. So, you know, like any trend, don't know how long the trend is going to last. And the main thing is just to basically, um, you know, take profits along the way and, and you know, try to try to leave some, some, you know, and even if it's something that you don't like. And, you know, sometimes it helps to just cover up the symbol because I'm already opinionated about mm -hmm. um, gold because I know it's been a difficult trade. And some, sometimes that voice in the back of your mind can be a detriment when something when the narrative um, changes and it really starts to trend. Um, so that's gold. Yeah, I've been looking at the, you know. This is the DBA. This is the agriculture. Um, yeah, yeah. Interesting, this uh, VPOC taken out. This is the agriculture futures um, uh, ETF. So it doesn't have stocks. It has more of, you know, there's like cocoa. That's, I think, like a decent weight in this, which, <laughs> you know, I, we know cocoa has been on fire. But mm -hmm. in terms of the other group, you know, I, I've been looking for this group to also catch. This is the agriculture. And it's, I tried um, once a uh, little more than a week ago and it didn't really work out it didn't kind of catch that momentum um i was in ntr and then i got out of it and mm -hmm. i got back in it today i saw a call buyer but it still is a rough looking chart right we're yeah. not like you know um it stalled today uh in the beginning of the day it looked like it had some promise and um you could see the candle for today you know not great and cf which is my favorite in the space because mm -hmm. it's a little bit stronger than everything else it's st it's stalled again <laughs> um like right where it needs to so this this is the uh top of value area and and again you'll see this a lot of times when stocks aren't ready to go um they'll get up to the top of the value area and and they'll fail so, um, you know, this is just uh, the daily chart. And if we go to the weekly here, right, you could see a couple of times on this weekly chart that uh, the prices try to break through this 84.72 level. Um, just like last year, it tried to break into the value area and it didn't have enough power or momentum, enough buyers couldn't do it, um, you know, and the volume isn't the best looking here either. So it just may not be ready yet, but I would think that this would be the logical group to go next. Yes. But um, if it's not ready, it's not ready. And it's really got to break 8472. Very nice. Absolutely. That's a great way of looking at commodities. They, they all tend to move in a pack. So it's like, once you see the metals are running and then you have this, now you're looking at fertilizers and there's MOS as well. Mosaic. Uh, I think that is, it's based out of Tampa, I think they're a US company. They're another one in that group, but CF leader and um, NTR. Remember, I mm -hmm. they, were, they were potash back in the day. Do you remember when they, I used to trade them as potash? Like what? Like, I don't know, oh, yeah. 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 Like yeah and Mosaic ago. is still, Mosaic is a tougher one. Um, mm -hmm. I've looked at this. So you'll go, I'll go through charts and I'll, I'll look at these names like once a week and I'm like, nah, I'd rather trade, yeah. you know, yeah. I'd rather wait for that CF to break out. Um, because this, so this could travel through here, but um, through this value area, and it does say bullish eighty percent rule on here. Um, but uh, I like when things are are doing or showing that relative strength and, and breaking out versus just traveling in a range. Well said. Relative strength is key. So we have to talk about copper, FCX, yep. and S SCCO, Southern Copper. Um, those two have been very strong. Oops, I got the, that's the wrong one. Hold on one second. I got sure. the user error, um, copper, copper futures. Here we go. Yeah, so this is at a really interesting level here. Um, copper made this, you can see I've got this trend line drawn and it's made this nice move, but it's gotten a little bit stifled here at mm -hmm. the at the top of this uh, value area. So I'm watching this 4.1210. Again, this value area is based on all of last year's um, activity, volume at price. And um, so it, it will be to me significant if copper can break this 4.12. Now the miners are not waiting for this. They're already, 
they're already going and oh, FC, yeah. <laughs> and fcx has been really strong i still prefer the scco yes I like um that. even though and so i don't mind if it gets less attention um sometimes the one that gets uh the less less attention actually work better but yeah i mean the, these are these are really nice moves and um you know a heck of a move here um it feels like it's slowing down a little bit but uh fcx still is still catching a lot of option activity mm -hmm. and um you know it's a real nice breakout of the uh that uh value areas so you know again like with anything uh, you know you can adjust your position sizes if you get involved in some of these names and you think they're a little bit extended you know you take a smaller you take a partial position smaller position just so that you could participate if you feel that your timing isn't perfect and this way you can be nimble and kind of add if these things take a little bit of a breather I love that being nimble and scaling in and scaling out is uh, definitely my style as well. I, I, I like that process. Uh, so let's, we talk about fall from grace. I don't know if they've fallen that much, but I guess to, to most people, mm -hmm. it feels like they have the AI leaders. Now, NVIDIA, uh, yep. king of all stocks. I mean, their earnings were just <laughs> beautiful. I mean, you can't get better earnings than that. And uh, the massive growth AI leader, they have a significant moat. And um, then SMCI, another uh, one mm -hmm. of my favorites, you know, I think I've talked about it every time we've met. Um, and, yeah, uh, we, you know. I mean, we were on the stock like right from the very beginning. Yeah, which long is, time. Which is impressive. And th this was, uh, I think when when we had, um, you know, kind of start, started talking on Twitter, I think it was the year, I think it was in 2022. It was. And and we were talking, and I know in like I, I was on a, um, another podcast or space with you and you had mentioned i was listening you you were on before i was and um you were talking about smci and i was like hey that's a stock that i've started to traffic mm -hmm. in and um you know i think we we were kind of um you know, going back and forth talking about like what it does and um yeah. and you really had a good handle on it very early on and i've been long and this whole time <laughs> That's 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 amazing. I mean, that's Dude, one of the hardest the things downs. to do. There's yeah. been some rough times over there. <laughs> there has been. I mean, even you know, yeah. I I won't name you know name names, but even I remember like this is going back more than a year ago. There was one of those um, like short outfits yes. you know, put, putting out a short report on it yes. and really taking the stock that. down. And that was you know, the stocks out of that. This is when it was like 100 or 200 bucks or something. I don't forget when it, exactly when it was, but um, and it recovered from there and recovered yeah. quite nicely. But I remember there you know. was a video that was put out right around the short report time and it had the CEO of SMCI <laughs> with Lisa Sue, the uh -huh. CEO of AMD. And that gave me real confidence. I was like, you know, if they were really frauds, as they said in this report, he wouldn't be sitting with Lisa Sue. So um, that had given me confidence. But um, yeah, you know, those short reports happen. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful, of course. But this one has proved to be a winner, an AI leader. Um, it's had, you know, massive, remember you, you tweeted about this recently, about the momentum and how when the momentum yeah. is gone, you got to be more cautious. Um, it needs to settle a little bit. Yeah. And, and this, you know, from when it really, cause I, it went kind of dormant for a while mm -hmm. and I didn't even, like, I started trading this and again, like, again, like after, cause it, cause like I said, like once stocks kind of go to sleep a little bit like this and go sideways, mm -hmm. I kind of travel out of them in terms yeah. of me, you know, once, once they go sideways, now I'll continue to monitor them um, for a change, but um, you know, I'll just kind of traffic out once they kind of break down a little bit. But I didn't even realize I didn't get the connection in the beginning when it started to kind of make this turn back higher. Um, and I was in it, but I'm like, I'm not really understanding the momentum, but, it, you know, it turned out to be an AI play. You know, it, it, it truly was, um, you know, with moving with NVIDIA and so forth. And um, and sometimes, you know, it's funny about following the price action. If you're paying attention to just what the price is telling you, you don't have to be an expert on what they're doing and um you know you don't have to know every aspect of their business if you if you're tuned into what's going on with volume and so forth and if you could read a chart appropriately you'll find these plays um you don't it's nice to be clever and to find you know to find this one when we did um <laughs> mm -hmm. that's always great but you don't you know it's not always uh required well said so let's take a closer look at what's been going on 
and how you're viewing this. You know, there's a lot of talk. I mean, I'm, I'm there's a massive call buying in this stock. If you look at the flow lately, it's a lot of call buying. Not that I only follow that. That's just one element, like you always mm -hmm. say as well. Um, but then people are saying technically there's a head and shoulders, which I don't see. I mean, you can't claim that until it's complete. Um, then they're saying, you know, it's still, I mean, it's still an yes, uptrend. Right. We It touched its 21 day today. Um, and then it closed above the 21 day moving average. How are you looking at this? I'm basically watching here. Um, all of those things uh, are notable and interesting, but you could see I've, I just recently, I think, drew this trend line in here just to kind of help a little bit. But mm -hmm. I, I will basically just use very simplistic things. And, you know, of course, like I've got an indicator that's uh, it's a little bit more complicated when mm -hmm. you've never seen it before, but it's actually very simplistic. So, you know, right now we're looking at this. Uh, so the yearly value by the way, is all the way down here. So, so that's <laughs> not in play. Yeah. So now we're looking at the value for the month. And sometimes when something's trending way above, then I'll use the moving averages to help mm -hmm. me a little bit with um, understanding what the trend is doing. So you kind of have a mixed signal. Now today it, the stock dropped. But it held it held perfectly. I'm just going to zoom in here a little mm -hmm. bit just so that you could see. But it did hold the bottom of value, and I think like that's significant. Wow, yeah. Is it is it significant enough that it's turning the corner? No. I don't. We we need more information, mm -hmm. and sometimes that's okay. Sometimes when people are looking at charts, they want the answer right away. Um, for me, it's okay. Like. Let it take, right now we know gold and energy is going and everything else. So there's other trades out there. Um, let this kind of, you know, percolate a little bit. And some of the, the other thing is too, these names got really hot in mm -hmm. terms of everybody's watching them. And sometimes that's not the best thing. Yeah. It's better when the momentum, like, you know, when they do consolidate, it gets some of that really hot money out of the stock and that's when, you know, that's kind of what happened with NVIDIA. If we kind of go back to yes, your, let's go to to your head. And, yeah, I mean, it's not a head and shoulders yet. And people will always look at patterns and think, oh, my God, that's that's a head, that's a head and shoulders. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's not until until it is, you know, people were mm -hmm. looking at this back here while, while NVIDIA was going sideways, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Here it comes. Here's the break. Yeah. Right. And um, it just was going sideways. Right. So mm -hmm. it never really broke that neck until it breaks the neckline. It's not a head and shoulders. Exactly. Um, so, you know, once it got going again, and, and that's the thing, like video already did this, right. Already had this nice move and it went sideways for like, I don't know how many months was this four or five months. Mm -hmm. People forgot about it. And then it resumed its uptrend and boy, did it ever do that. So oh, yeah. I think with it going back to SMCI, like it, it who knows? Like I don't know if it's going to do that type of consolidation, but I would like to see it at the very least, you know, number one, stay inside the value area, which tells me that it's not breaking down. Number two, I would like to see it get back above its 20 day moving average, right? Just very easy trend following um, because if it doesn't get back above its 20 day moving average, then just the momentum is not there. Um, and if it can't get above there, then I know it's just consolidating and maybe it will come down to the 50, right? And then that might be a, that might be a buying opportunity, but in between here and here is like, it's no man's land. Yes. Um, so I don't really want anything to do. I want this. I'll, <laughs> I'll participate in this. Um, but I don't really want like the sideways stuff. Um, and I'm not going to short sell this to this, you know, if you're, I guess if you're really aggressive, like you could look for a move down to the 50. Um, but really like, I don't like to sort anything above its 50 day moving average, right? If it's breaking down, then mm -hmm. you know, something is differently going on. But um, you know, so I think with this one, we just have to be patient. Yeah, exactly. Well said patience. Um, I also don't like to short uh, stocks in an uptrend. I mean, it's clearly in an uptrend and it's above its 50 day. And that has um, growth. Yeah, absolutely. And we also know something else on the fundamental side, earnings are May 7th. And well, so, yeah. and yeah. right. And we know their pattern. We've known these guys for two years plus, and they sometimes, you know, release pre earnings announcements where they raise their earnings expectations. They, they do have a history. Right. Of doing they have that. a history of that. So <laughs> yeah. let's think the next few weeks is a potential for that to occur. Uh, so there's some potential positive catalyst in the next couple of weeks. 
um, with SMCI. So that's a great point. To- very good, very notable point. You know, and, and that's the beauty too. Like you, you mentioned about like call buying and so forth. You know, you can take a speculative position, and this way you're risking just the premium. In this way, you're in there in case they do announce something, you know, ahead of their earnings. Yes, I am definitely a call buyer here, um, call holder, I guess you should say, mm-hmm. um, in SMCI as well as shares. Um, it's a long position for me and it definitely requires patience. I did run up a lot and it was very hot, um, but I still, in my opinion, um, it's still um, at a good price level and undervalued compared to its peers. Um you know, with the massive growth that it has. And that's a yeah, fundamental and, side. And that's what's um, amazing with mm-hmm. both of those names. Like they they get some, they get bad comparisons to other names that have had big run-ups because when we started looking at this name a couple of years ago, the PE was like, it was like a 10. I know, right? Remember that was like single digits or something. Yeah. It was like crazy. It was before AI. It was like, yeah. it's a value stock acting like a growth, growth stock. It, it was, was a like, value tech stock. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, now I think well, with the last time I looked at it, it was like, it's trading about two and a half to three times it's forward sales. I mean, they're projecting 25 billion. Um, it was like 15 billion up to date. They, they could have 25 billion. We'll see, you know, it, but one thing I know about the CEO at SMCI, he doesn't misspeak. He doesn't go and speak over. He tends to be more conservative and then he comes out and he raises it later. So if he says 15 billion to maybe even 25, I think that's very possible. So yeah, with it's, that, it's, those kind of, right, those kind of numbers. It's so much better to, to, to do the under promise and, and yeah, over deliver. Yeah, over deliver. Versus we've seen so many CEOs do it backwards and it, oh, it doesn't work gosh. well when they do it backwards. Yeah, or how about the CEO of, uh, what was it, Palo Alto that comes out and says there's there's fatigue. There's fatigue. Yeah. And he really, that cybersecurity industry was definitely affected by that. Um, you know, oh, what about um, Celsius? That was another hot one. You know, all these hot ones. Elf, they had great mm-hmm. earnings. Um, what What's going on with Celsius? That's a big uh, fruit, be- fruit um Yeah, Celsius... I, uh, this is a, this is a tough one for me. I have not been able to trade this one uh, very successfully in a while because, you know, it makes these big moves like this Yeah, and it did have some follow through to it, but um, I don't know for what, sometimes you'll find stocks that you're very good at trading. And this one is just, I don't like when stocks do this run up and then they, they just bleed it out like this. So I don't, like right now it's kind of in no man's land for me too. You know, maybe this 50 day moving average would be a better, like this would be where I would be more interested in it. Um, But yeah, I mean this even like you could, like if you want to be fancy, like you could even draw like a trend line here and say like, Oh, that's some sort of a head. Like that to me looks like more of a head and shoulders, even though most head and shoulders are kind of abstract, but um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just a little bit, it's too weak and it's a little bit too loose right now for me. So I think if it comes back in, like I would be watching it if it got back to the 50-day moving average. This is another one that's on the shelf for me right now. On the shelf. And then the elf on the shelf. How about that yeah. elf? Yeah, <laughs> is that, elf, is that elf one on is the am- shelf? <laughs> elf is amazing. And again, like I've heard stories about, you know, because they've just done so much better than their peers. Yes. And they, this is an expensive stock. So it did hold on to its 50 day moving average. Um, But, you know, again, you're seeing a lot of these patterns in some of these growth charts where you had your high here, you had a lower high here, you had another lower high here. So again, it might be in a consolidation area. I would like to get, like I have this one a lot of times on my watch list Mm -hmm. um, because it's just acted so well over the last couple of years. Um, So the last time it was at the 50 day moving average was, was back in here. And that was a good buying opportunity. Oh, yeah. So, you know, let's see if it can kind of build a little bit. Like I would be okay with it backing and filling um, as long as it holds the 50. If it doesn't hold the 50 day moving average, wow. that's a, that's a no, no for me. And I was talking about this one earlier because I love trading Costco oh, over the yeah. last couple of years, but we haven't seen this break the, the um, we haven't seen, seen this break the, the, uh, where did this, sorry. Um, it's 50 day moving average since October. So that to me also like, you know, tells me to be a little bit cautious in this, in the beginning of April, um, 
another thing that we haven't really talked about too much is we're going to get a lot of earnings reports that mm -hmm. are coming out too. So that's going to take center stage soon. But um, yeah, I mean, and I was long in here, you know, I, I don't mind talking about a couple of losers, but um, I thought we might see this kind of move yeah. in here. And I started to build a position in here and then I, I added a little bit to it here and then yesterday I bailed on the position um, because yeah. I was like, I think that this is might be breaking down versus um, usually I give some of the names that I really like. I, I give them a little bit more room um, because Costco usually just comes back. But mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, if something, you know, you cannot fall in love with names. And um, as much as I like the company, yeah. the company and the stock are two different things. And um, so I'll, you know, when when it's time. I'll revisit this. I don't know if it's going to continue lower here and maybe take out this yeah. downside VPOC, uh, but we'll see. And I don't think it's done. I don't think the stock is done for good. Um, I think it'll just be another, you've got to be the same thing with the P word patience and let it, let it play out a little bit and, um, and then let it build up again. Very nice. Um, you know, I, that was smart that you bailed. Look at that big red candle right there. And it, it definitely could keep going down. Um, it's a great company, but That's you never know. Yeah. Sticking with the C's, you know, CrowdStrike has been yeah, one of my favorite. Good, yeah. And same, same thing I was in. Um, so going back to March, right. I was looking for a breakout here and mm -hmm. I added a position here. Um, it was either this day or this day. I was able to take one target, you know, cause mm -hmm. again, I, like I'll take targets. I'll, I'll try to get, I'll try to lock something in on a trade, um, you know, from the start and this way, then I can kind of relax a little bit once mm -hmm. I get some, once I get some profits in the trade and this yeah. way it, it helps my cost basis too, because of taking course. that one target, this day was a complete rejection. And, um, and I bailed on it, uh, the other day and it, I'm still watching it because I don't think that this, that the trend is over. Um, but it's got to hold this 50, the same thing. It's got to hold a 50 day moving average because um, once the name has been doing this for, you know, it's been doing this for, for a good while at this point. Um, but if it starts to break down, I don't want to be in stocks that are, that are breaking down. Um, I want to be out of stocks that if they're starting the breakdown phase. Yeah. There's always an opportunity and there's always a bull market somewhere. There's no reason to hold on to these as they build out a base or, you know, they go sideways or even mm -hmm. worse and go lower. I mean, that is clearly, in my opinion, the leader in the cybersecurity industry and in the whole sector of CrowdStrike top. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, it's, there's no rush to, to jump back in. Yeah. I mean, here's another one that I've been watching too, but just is not ready. Um, and I've looked at it like three or four times in here. Um, nice gap up. Oh, but, okay. Yeah. But no, no follow through, um, you know, whatsoever. So I'll continue to watch it. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's part of this game is just not having a position and just watching, right. And waiting for your, for what you want to see. Yeah. Being patient just and waiting it's and being very selective. Um, so. What do you think about Micron? MU had great yeah, earnings and my, Micron's the the darling right now. We'll, so we'll yeah. no jinx, no jinx because I I did actually I kind of missed this this one um, mm -hmm. and I got into it a little bit today um, with the inside day today. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking I'm hoping for the uh, for this to continue. Um, you know it's above value, which means it's trending. Mm -hmm. It's above all the short term moving averages. So yes, it's it's a, got a lot of um, momentum to it right now, which scares me because this group overall, um, not so much semis, but tech has lost its momentum. So it's tough going into some names where, where, where it's not shooting fish in a barrel in terms of the group. Um, you know, and that's how semis were a couple months ago. It, you, you basically had your choice of what, what you wanted to enter, but now the momentum is, has changed. Um, and it's not to say that it's not going to continue. Um, you know, because it continues to see catch buyers. So yeah, I'm in a position, but um, if it if it doesn't hold, you know, from uh, the the lows from yesterday, uh, that's where I'll be out of the name. So again, always important to kind of know where your um where you where your out is before you get into the trade. Well said, absolutely. Uh, no, before you enter the trade, um, this one uh, presented opportunity today, in my opinion. Um, very strong. Um, let's see. Let's hope it continues. Um, now, what about the Meta? 
Meta has been showing strength lately. Have you been mm -hmm. watching that one? I have. We we were talking about it a little bit today. Um, it's doing like so. You know, the performance over the last since it had this gap up. You know, mm -hmm. it's been more of like it's crawling, right? And the dips have been better to to buy mm -hmm. versus you know trying to chase a little. You're trying to play a little bit of strength. You know, it really hasn't ha been able to put too many green days together. But like this is not a bad spot for this, yeah. and it had a really good reaction um, today. So mm -hmm. you know maybe this can start like two or three green candles. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, I mean it. I uh, had it, some. it did hold where it needed to last month. Mm -hmm. It just didn't do a lot of mm -hmm. much, you know. And um, and I think that's why we, you know, we going back to you know the beginning of um, our conversation was that we just saw other areas kind of catch bigger and better momentum but um it's not to say that you know with interest rates moving you know maybe there's a little bit of a rotation back into some of these plays that probably have you know a ton of cash and are not uh having to worry about high interest rates well said that's exactly right once again you know focus on the macro or the fundamental side you look at these are the cash generators you know, mm -hmm. higher interest rates is actually good for them. I mean, it's fine, you know, it doesn't affect them. Yeah. And they're the ones yeah. that that have the money. Uh, so yeah, these are definitely good ones. And then NVIDIA, like we talked about earlier, I think to me, that's still, even though it's going through, you know, what it's going through right now, taking a rest, uh, still the king of stocks. And I tend to be in the boat that I think that Apple and Tesla have, you know, they're a little bit uh, sideways and not the king of the market. And it's Apple's moved over. And I think NVIDIA is uh, yeah, I mean, taking its spot. And that's fine too. I mean, you yeah. know, it's, you know, I see so many people when like <laughs> they spend so much time and I get it like on, um, you know, whatever financial media, I guess you, you listen to, yeah. you spend a lot of time on these stocks, but like, there's so many stocks to look at. If I can like forget about Tesla for a while or like a couple other mm -hmm. stocks, like that just allows me to focus my energy on, on other areas of the market. So I don't mind when stocks get out of favor, you don't mm -hmm. have to be in them, you know, and, and, exactly. um, They're you know, changing the, the, leaders, I think. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with changing leadership. Like, do I think Tesla's done? No, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Um, but I don't think it's the time for Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I can't tell you when it's going to change, but I know that it's trading below its value area for the year. And there's so many stocks that are on the opposite side. So it's in a period of, I don't, I don't want to say like the, the company's in decline or anything, because again, the stock and the, and the company are two mm -hmm. different things. And that's important to to understand that. But when it's trading below the value area like this, it's a it's a hands off for me. Um, because again, I'm I'm mainly a trend trader. Um uh, and if it happens to get back above 190, 60, right, then it's a it's a completely different picture. But for now, um, I, I can't tell you when this thing is gonna stop going down, and nor do I really care because I'm not in it. Um, but I mean, that's, I just, that's the way I kind of look at things. Like I get a lot of questions about Apple too, which I don't want to ignore Apple because, um, same thing. They've got a lot of cash on their balance sheet too, mm -hmm. but I know that, you know, I want to see what happens if it comes down to 163.75, because that's the support level for the year. Very well said. I love this. Okay. I love this value area. I know you talked about how it's price and volume. Yep. Um, tell us more about this trading process that you have. I love it. I love your charts on Twitter. I urge everyone to follow you. It's very, it looks oh, so you. simple. You're welcome. Yep. But tell us more about this trading uh, style, the strategy that you have. Yeah. So, so um, one of uh, my colleagues, Webb Begol, uh, we've been, uh, you know, trading together for, for a long time. And he introduced me to this concept. You know, when I was an institutional trader, I was very like, I know how certain traders trade and that they care about certain prices. So he introduced um, the market webs to me and I had no idea what he was talking about. And I'm like, let's, I'm like, let's go out, at, you know, after work, let's have a couple of drinks and but you got to explain this to me. And he started to explain like what before, people started to really look at volume profile and, um, you know, anchored VWAPs and, and that kind of thing. Um, you know, he really had an, had started to get an understanding of 
of that volume at price. And instead of looking at the volume on the bottom of the screen, you know, telling you what levels mm -hmm. uh, that volume occurred at. And I had to kind of think about it. And I said, well, wait a minute, that does make sense to me, because I know that in some institutional traders, the way that they, you know, if, if they value a stock, meaning like, you know, using fun fundamental analysis, they may say, hey, when the stock gets to 163, I'm a buyer at that level, because it's a really cheap level, um, in terms of their, uh, you know, in terms of their growth, and in terms of uh, what the interest rates are, and so forth. So, you know, that there is some memory there and, you know, like they'll plug into their models and say, okay, with this growth rate, 163 makes sense to me. So they may give an order to their, uh, so like a hedge fund or a big institution may give an order to their, their broker and say, hey, if Apple ever gets down to 164, I'm a buyer there, right? And, you know, and then Apple may begin to kind of go up from there. And they'll they'll be a buyer back at those levels again because they they value that as as a very good price. So when we went through the concept, and I was like, okay, I do think that there's something to that um, that certain traders will re will return back to certain levels. And um, you know we've seen that work time and time again. And um, you know it's it's very good. Like there is an example. Like I try to give provide examples all the time mm -hmm. but yeah. like there is mm -hmm. this one <clears throat> so it really just helps me separate um you know emotion a little bit with knowing mm -hmm. where there's potential overhead supply so this is what's known as a virgin point of control um this is where a lot of buyers and sellers previously met up and it's basically taking like an average of that and you could see yesterday like everybody was really impressed with what um at with what Dell was doing yesterday, but it, it ran right in, like this was telling you to take some profits uh, because there, this was an area of overhead supply. So it's nice because it didn't completely break down here. It just basically checked right back into its support. But you could be, you know, if you sold here, you could be buying back today at a lower level. Very nice. Sounds perfect to me. I love that. Uh, great um, virgin point of control is that what you yeah, call some, it so yeah some people will will think it's um they'll call it something else uh like volume point of control or something like that. but it's it's a it's called so any of these lines um so for example like for this period right there's there's a line right here which is called its point of control mm -hmm. right so this is inside the value rate this is where the majority of the volume occurred last week Right. So this becomes kind of significant in a sense of, um, you know, it's not so much like if price gets here, like it's not really a signal to trade from. Mm -hmm. It's just where all the majority of the volume occurred. Now, if if what happens like almost like a like an earnings gap where a stock will break out and it doesn't fill that gap, it's kind of the same the same situation where. Um, if in this situation, the stock was declining and it just left a lot of people who were long the stock here. So when the stock returns here, <laughs> you know, people want to basically, uh, it's, you know, it's that overhead supply yes. where people are going to want to check out, um, where there was a previous, uh, you know, big amount of volume, uh, before and like a really good one, which I was showing in my, um, end of day video, we were talking about TLT. Right. And I can't make it, I not make it up, but because that's not what we're doing, but I can't describe it any better than this um, TLT chart. Right. If you look at the last, um, you know, the October low, right, this one right to this virgin point of control mm -hmm. and the overhead ones will act as supply. The ones that are below price will act as demand. Right. And you could yeah. see when we came down, right. So this is originating from all the way from over here where price did not go through, um, there wasn't any overlap. So we call this a virgin point of control here too. But sure enough, there was demand here, right? There was also demand here too, right? Price did not go through this uh, value area at all. And um, so we, we draw a line forward from that point of control. And sure enough, when price went down there, that halted um, in the short term, um, that halted the, the decline in, uh, in bond prices. But, but that was the low. Yeah, that was created. Wow, in, that's uh, an excellent example of showing that. Um, you know, ultimately, it's about supply and demand. And I don't know if everyone realizes that, but it's about the supply and demand. And, you know, right. when the sellers run out, then there's buyers. When the buyers run out, then it's, it's like it goes back and forth. So I love the way that um, you have that on your chart. Now, if people want to use these type of indicators, how would they go about doing that? 
So, um, well, uh, thank you for asking because we actually, we had this on um, one trading platform and it was a bit cumbersome. Uh, mm -hmm. We kind of ran out of like memory and I'm not the coder. Uh, Web is the person who does all the coding and does all the programming. So, um, and I'm comfortable in that role. I, I, I used to, um, I, I had the um, privilege of like developing a couple uh, ETF algorithms when I was at Merrill Lynch. Wow. And, um, you know, and, and was on the team of doing that. So I didn't code what was going on behind the scenes and like algos, but, you know, I could basically have a conversation with somebody who is rolling out the features and, and yeah. so on and so forth. So we work very well that way, but we've, he's moved it on to another platform, which is trading view. And you can actually, um, we have a subscription now to the market webs. Oh, so you could go to, um, cool. marketwebs.com. Uh -huh. And um, you can you can get a I think we have a 15 day trial so 15 day free trial so you could check it out um, again it's there's there's a learning curve with this you you know it'll take a little bit of while to uh, to figure out but if you're if you want to trade very disciplined and you if you want to kind of take the emotion out of what mm -hmm. you're doing um, and really kind of use like process of elimination about you know where you want to be in stocks versus where you don't then I think it, like it's a great approach to use. Agree. And I'm going to put that in the description uh, for sure, because being more objective in our trades is key. You know, human emotion gets the best of all of us and we tend to be impulsive sometimes. So being able to be more objective um, is important and staying disciplined. So love that market webs. Um, so cool. Thank you so much, Christian. Now, yes. using everything we discussed, what are your top, you know, five, let's say top five stocks or sectors that you're watching closely or anticipating for quarter two and the rest of 2024? Yeah, I, I think it's tough to come up with, with five things because, um, you know, or just a couple, it, just anything. yeah, yeah, no, no, but yeah, it's, <laughs> so it's good. Like, it's good to just like, to, to, uh, like vet this a little bit. Like I was very big on the industrials, but I think the industrials have run up a little bit. Um, I do think right now, like just because it has the momentum, um, I think energy stocks, um, for now, I, you know, are really running, they're strong. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, as the segments that we talked about, like, I like a little bit of uranium right now. Um, and in terms of the semis, I think provided that you get dips on these groups, but I, I don't have like the five areas right now. I'm basically just, um, as we kick off the second quarter and as we get to, to earnings, I think more ideas are going to are going to reveal themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think buying dips and being patient in the semiconductors, I don't think that that trend is going to go away. I think that's, you know, we've seen semiconductors um, consolidate and go higher, consolidate and go higher. So I, I think that's important. Um, I think that there's little areas of retail uh, that are interesting. Like retail is always kind of interesting to me. Um, I love the home builders as well, provided that interest rates don't go nuts. So, you know, this, you can, you know, again, you kind of have to just, you know, change, change as you see some of these macro things mm -hmm. happening. But, um, you know, I, I, I like when the, when the home builders come back in, because it's not just about the, the, the underlying buying of the house, but I think people will continue to renovate. And, um, you know, I, I was, I was looking at a stock the other day, which was like a roofing stock. Um, and you can mm -hmm. see like this name, like I, I know it's not a popular name, but look at the breakout in this stock. Wow. So, you know, it, it means to me that pe people are renovating their house when I see roofing stocks go up um, as well as flooring stocks do well. So oh, yeah, flooring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just, it's just the point of, you know, picking your spots in, in some of these groups, like the semis, um, you know, like energy for now and, and the different groups in energy. Um, I think cy like cyber is on my must watch list, but I may not really begin to get involved in it again for like another couple of weeks or month whenever it reveals itself. But um, I think eventually that will come into play because I don't think people are going to drop their cyber protection at any point. You know? No, absolutely. I think it's an essential sector. Uh, you said flooring. It's funny. I was just looking at Mohawk Industries, yeah, yeah. MHK. They get pulled back today, but um, 
Yeah, I was looking at that for flooring as well. I mean, people, if they're not going to be moving as much because they're trapped in their homes with low interest rates, low mortgage rates, uh, right. they're probably going to be fixing up their homes. So very smart to be looking at roofing or yeah, flooring. It's a, right? it's a great it's a great point because the original, you know, why these things took off so well, um, you know, was was COVID, you know, because people were staying at home and and working from home and they, they renovated their house. But you're right. I mean, pe people are... Um, not there's not so much of the velocity of you know the moves that you're seeing mm -hmm. in real estate. Um, you know you're you're seeing more of this. So you know Lowe's is one of those names I was watching in the beginning of the week, but um, it's kind of broken down a little bit. So again, it's one of those things on on the watch list. It doesn't work. You kind of go back to the drawing board. But um, I think really to kind of answer your question too, I think we're gonna find we're gonna find some things out through earnings season. We always do. And um, you might find some potential groups that reemerge um, after we get some of the earnings reports out. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, cybersecurity, I mean, it's an essential sector. Maybe this earnings report um, will, will prove that um, they're much stronger than people thought. Um, and there's not as much fatigue out there, as Palo Alto CEO said, um, right. a CrowdStrike CEO right away. Uh, said, oh, that's not true. So um, we'll have to watch and see. Um, and then we have SMCI earnings coming and the NVIDIA again. And then it all begins all over again. Um, and then Mew, that was uh, that's that was a great earnings uh, that we saw. And then you showed Dell. And I'm wondering, is there any other tech that you're watching for pullbacks? Is there anything that's on your watch that you can think of? Uh, yeah, I, you know, again, like, I'll go now. to these names every couple of days. Mm -hmm. I'll just say it's not ready yet. Um, you know, and you could see too, like every time some of these names, like they'll give you hints, right? That they're just not ready yet. You know, here was now back in the middle of last month, try to break higher failure. Um, a couple of these other candles just didn't look right. Um, I was even looking, like I even tweeted out HubSpot yesterday. I'm like, hey, oh, yeah. you know, HubSpot is trying to resolve higher, but look at the look at what happened to it today. So again, like some of these things, there's nothing that you could do but except kind of laugh because, you know, you, you kind of go through the, you know, I love doing the research behind the scenes, and that's why this market is always it's always uh, exciting to me because it's always mm -hmm. a challenge. But when you start to see names, like it's a surefire um, indicator that when names look like they're going to break out and then they get walloped on the breakout point, they're, they're just not ready yet and they need more time. Um, and you don't really have the answer to that question about like how long you don't know. It's, yeah. It's going to take, but you just continue to kind of um, watch and pay attention. Like I even like have, have looked at this chart a couple of times, even though Salesforce isn't my favorite name to trade. Mm -hmm. um, but I, like, I'll watch it because like, it's got an interesting, like you could draw like a little triangle pattern in here too, but is it exciting enough to kind of get, get long? I don't think yet. No. And, you know, that's another thing too. If you're reading the tape a little bit, you can use the option activity um, to see if people are starting to position in some of these things for, you know, the, the longer term. Um, I also like considering we're, ju we're just going through some ideas, but like uh, Uber is another name that oh, yeah. I, you know, I don't think is going to go away. I think people are going to continue to use Uber. And, um, you know, it, it's the fact that this thing also had a massive run. So let it consolidate a little while. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and uh, it did hold its 50 day moving average so far. I do like when names you know, once they've kind of lost a little bit of that um, momentum, have kind of gone a little bit too far too fast. If the that 50 day moving average, when it catch up, catches up to the price, it becomes an interesting decision area because either it's going to bounce and continue its trend or it's going to break and start to um, to push lower. Very nice. Yeah, I've been watching Uber as well. Uh, nice moves on that one. Consolidation is great. You know, they need to release some steam a little bit um, and then, you know, then are ready for the next leg up. Um, what about the crypto miners? You know, you have the miners, the halving is this month. What are your thoughts on Bitcoin and Coinbase? Yeah, th so these stocks, they really move um, and they're... I don't want to say names that I haven't been trafficking in. Um, it's one of the areas that have been super strong. Like, you know, we talked about the best areas of, mm -hmm. 
of the first quarter and and certainly crypto is um is is amongst the the leaders um but that's very they're very very fast names um and you've got to be committed to kind of watching it because of the volatility that these things mm -hmm. have so like we looked at a couple other growth areas which i kind of view bitcoin as as that or growth momentum you know it's got that lower high look to it so i i'm not sure what it's doing here yet um i'm not sure if this this is going to hold you could certainly try along here versus this 65 490 level mm -hmm. but it's got a hold in here and if not you know where does it go oh. you know maybe down you know maybe down in here so that's why I would be a little bit concerned right here if it doesn't hold, but it's done a really good job, you know, in here. And, you know, maybe it's just forming a little bit of consolidation. So that's something that I would be watching. The one name that I've traded, it's a little bit slower, um, which is, which is Robin hood, oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, and it, because I think it's depending if we're going to continue with this type of market where it's, it's crypto, it's, you know, more traders getting involved. It's some, some of the meme stocks, um, you know, I think that uh, this is a nice way to express it. I, um, and it's already really broken out from its base. You know, it. I love these bases like this. And, um, you know, nice check back here. So let's see if the trend can continue. I'm still long this name in one of my accounts. Very nice. Um, and uh, so that's the name that I'm focusing on. It's just a little bit easier than coin. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little bit cheaper. Like coin, speaking of a virgin point of control takeout, notice it's just consolidating um, at this big, uh, you know, consolidation station. And, um, you know, it will have to get away from that. But um, again, a lot of volume back in here. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's kind of hung up um, why where it is right now. Yeah, makes sense right there. You see that? Um, and then it does work with Bitcoin pricing. I notice it follows that so as well. So we'll have to see what Bitcoin does and then we can see what Coinbase does. But yeah, I like that chart, that virgin point of control there. Um, yeah, it's always about the supply and you got sellers waiting to, to get out over there. Um, supply and demand. Thank you so much. Christian, this has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely, you yeah. are a real professional. I love your style and your <laughs> charts. You. And uh, you're so smart as well. Wow, algorithms too. I mean, amazing. I don't know what you don't do. Um, <laughs> but please tell all our listeners how they can follow you and they can find this market webs and tell us about TTG. Yeah. So, um, so just, you know, he's very simply on, on Twitter at C from the first initial last name and um, Tribeca trade group.com is, is, uh, is my company. And, um, and then we also have uh, myself and web uh, kind of have a, a joint venture with, with marketwebs.com. So that's where you can find out about the indicator. We've got a couple of videos up there on marketwebs.com and um, you could access either the, the free trial, but you could also find out more about it and some examples and, and so on and so forth. So thank you very much. It, it's always a pleasure um, to, to have a conversation with you, whether it's on zoom or, or whether it's, uh, you know, in downtown New York, yeah, the, the last time that, that I, again. <laughs> yeah, we, we were out for um, Brian Shannon had his had his book out and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was nice to um, to be a part of that celebration. So I look I forward love to meeting you and hanging out with you. We had some drinks together and we were right outside your office. Actually, you work yep. right in Wall Street yep. area, which is awesome. Um, love but Stone yeah, that was Street. Great. Yep. yeah, I love yep. it. So beautiful down there. Um, definitely have to get together again and uh, love talking markets with you. Uh, thank you so much, Christian. Absolutely. A lot of fun as, as always. Thank you.